In this video, we are going to continue our exploration of the Voxel Paint toolset by now focusing on features such as volumetric slice painting, utilization with smart materials, and with primitives. So I'm going to just quickly show a sample here where I have utilized not only smart materials, but also voxel sculpting brushes with vox hide enabled. I can ghost that layer or just hide it in order to reveal some battle damage I created. I'm going to add a primitive now by going to the object section of the tool panel. You can also hit the space bar to bring the tools to you. I'll go ahead and select the primitives tool. The prompt at the bottom of the screen is just alerting me that the layer I have selected is hidden. The next thing I need to decide is whether I want to put this on an independent layer or merge it with a currently existing object. I'm going to do both in this demonstration, but I first want to start by merging the primitive with a currently existing object. That object would be this right arm. Let's go ahead and hit the H key as I hover over this arm. That will automatically select it in the sculpt tree panel. And now I'll select something like the cylinder. I will use click to place, scale to brush radius, and use stroke direction to quickly place it with it oriented in the correct direction. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to create just a simple material with voxel paint checked. And I'm going to use black. At the top of the tool options panel, I can adjust the roughness, metalness, and opacity. I will go ahead and hit the enter key for the apply button. The default Boolean option is add. But if I wanted to subtract, then I would want to change this accordingly. I'll hit the enter key. I still have this primitive preview object and 3D coat is making it semi-transparent so that I can still see the primitive, but I can also see what's beneath it. Let's switch to something like the transform tool. And now I can see the result and it's applied that material. So let me add another. I'm just going to scale this in. Pull it out a bit. And this one will be a subtractive Boolean. Well, we'll switch to subtract and then hit apply. Again, I'll just switch to another tool so that I can see the result a little more clearly. Even though this new primitive was merged or welded to the arm object, it did not overwrite the material that was previously applied it only applies it directly where the primitive itself was merged. Now I'm going to create a child layer by going to the right hand side and I'll click this plus icon and I'm going to increase the resolution by clicking the increase resolution icon. Because we are working with volumetric pixels, it's a lot like working in Photoshop. If you want to ensure that your image has the correct resolution, you either scale it to the appropriate proportion or you increase the dots per inch. In 3D Coat, increasing the resolution on the layer is equivalent to adding dots per inch in Photoshop. Since this is a child layer, it just makes sense to have the resolution match the parent. And that's what I've done here. Let's go back to primitives and let's click the gear primitive. I'll do the same thing with the click to place options. I'll scale my brush and try to center it up. So again, I can move it in a little bit, scale it. And in the tool options panel, I have options for reducing the teeth or increasing it and the gear depth. Let's reduce the teeth just a few more times. I may also want to adjust the inner hole radius. Now let's try to apply a smart material straight away to this primitive. First, I will create a new paint layer in order to apply this smart material to. That way I have the option to modify it independently afterward. If I select something inside the paint section, I'll see a smart material preview. 
Let's go to the activity bar in the upper right corner and hover over the smart material icon and select a metal subfolder. And then I can choose whichever metal I want to utilize. I can scale the map size here. What I tend to do is I scale it until I see a repeating pattern and then I can dial that back a bit. If I'm happy with the preview, I can now return to the primitives tool and as I apply it, it will include the smart material in the voxel paint. The last Boolean mode I chose was subtract. I'm going to change that back to add and then hit apply. And you can now see that indeed the smart material was applied to it. Let's now hit the W key to inspect visually how dense this object is. And it probably would not hurt to increase the resolution of the model one time. I'll hit Control Z to undo, and then I will click the Increase Resolution icon one time, then hit the Apply button once more. Even at 16 levels of resolution, because it's relatively small in scale, it's not excessively dense. I can smooth it. I have a hotkey set for that. I'll set the smoothing degree at 3, and I will select another tool so that the Primitives Preview object is no longer obscuring my view. I'll add one last primitive just to top it off, and I will speed up the playback while I do this in order to shorten the video. As long as this panel is up, that lets me know that it's going to apply this smart material to it. Again, I'm going to add and I'm going to hit apply. And then I can step out by selecting another tool. So that's using primitives with not only voxel paint, but smart materials as well. Okay, so now let's apply a little bit of battle damage here in the head region. To isolate the head, I'm going to hover my cursor over the object and hit the H key and that will automatically select it here among the box tree layer panel. Let's isolate it by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the visibility icon. And I will close that smart material for the moment. And I will hide this layer that has the smart material applied to it. What we're seeing now is a base metallic PBR shader that is applied to the volume all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a smart material over the top of this to give it a better metallic appearance. I'm going to create a new layer and name it head. If I wanted to change the shader, I could go back to the activity bar, hover over the shader icon, and either make changes to the current one or choose a different shader. I can right click and choose to edit the permanent shader settings or just this current object shader settings. I'm going to adjust the permanent shader settings because I don't really like the cavity on this one. I want to try and make it a little bit more subtle. We can get a, a fairly decent appearance with just a shader. And I think I'm done with the edits. Now I want to go to my custom layout, which I used in the previous video. I can do that by going to the Windows menu, restore page layout. So now instead of my tool options panel being a floating panel over here, I have it docked to the right hand side along with my brush options. I will go to my smart materials panel and test a few of these materials. Perhaps this aluminum. After clicking on the thumbnail, I will expand the smart material preview window. Again, I'll just scale it until I see that pattern, then dial it back a bit. Okay. Now, some of this green is just the environment being reflected. So I can try this one and scale that too. Let's try something else. I'll try something like this. Again, the scale is a bit off. Okay. Oh. 
Try that one. Kind of like it. If I hover my cursor over it, I'll get a larger thumbnail. If I click it a second time, then it will bring up the Smart Material Editor. If I hide the preview window, I'll get a Material Ball preview. If I click here, I'll get an even larger preview. So as I make adjustments, I'll see the changes reflected on this Material Ball. If you make changes to the material, you will probably want to save it as a new material. With the preview window open, I will scale the material until I see a result I'm happy with. I'll test it with the brush tool. Now I'll switch to the fill tool so that I can just simply click on it to fill the entire object. Once I'm done, I can close the Material Stencil Control Panel in order to close the material. For the Metal Smart Material, I will make that a bit thicker than I would for the paint that's going to be applied over the top of that. Let me make that 15. Let's try this again by clicking on the Smart Material thumbnail and then clicking on the object. This time, the paint depth will be quite a bit thicker. I'm now going to search for a different Smart Material subfolder to apply a paint over the top of this metal. I could simply make adjustments to these, but I'll look in another folder and select this one. I'll go ahead and apply that, but this time I'm going to make the depth rather thin because in the real world, paint tends to be a very thin layer. Let's go with two. Next, I'll click on the object to fill it with this green paint. Yeah, let's go ahead and apply a bit of battle damage in this region. And I'm going to switch to a sculpting brush. Something like the extruder will be fine. And in this case, I don't need voxel paint enabled anymore. I'm going to use Act as Vox Hide to degrade the volume, but in a non destructive way. I'm going to use a stamp draw mode. And from now on, I'm just going to hit the E key to bring the E panel to me. For the sake of time, I'm going to just speed up a playback while I continue working in this area. Another good option is to use the movable stamp draw mode. You can use the touch ring on your Wacom tablet to scale it up and down as you need. The movable stamp allows the artist to move their cursor around the surface and see a preview. And then you can use the nine and zero key on your keyboard to rotate. All right, so I'm going to switch to another brush, but still using the movable stamp draw mode. You may have noticed that the metal is already showing through and all I have really done is a little bit of sculpting. And I'll switch to the regular stamp. All right, let's finish up now by focusing on volumetric slice painting. It's very similar to the Vox Slice tool. However, instead of simply revealing the interior of a volume, it will allow the user to paint wherever the object is sliced. Use cases where this could be helpful is perhaps medical and dental illustration as well as technical illustrations. With the brush tool active and in the tool options panel, the volumetric slice painting enabled, I am ready to begin. The first thing we would want to do is select the preferred axis. So in this case, it's aligned along the minus X axis. As I move the gizmo, you can see where I have already done a little bit of painting. I did this by creating a curve, which I accessed from the E panel in the closed spline draw mode. When the curve is selected, it's highlighted, and then I can hit the Enter key to apply paint. By default, it brushes along the curve, but you could right mouse button click and choose Fill Inside Projection. In the image mode of the color palette, I was able to select a color from the image by simply picking on it. As I move the gizmo back and forth, you can see where the paint was actually applied along a few different slices. If you need to make a transform to your curve, there is a transform tool among the list of curve tools in the toolbar. If I were finished and ready to render, I cannot currently, as of this recording, 
render this in voxel mode. I have to switch to surface mode. It just shows the entire volume. But what I can do is go to the sculpt tree panel and if I have, let's say, three slices where I have done some paintwork, I can create duplicates. I can hide that one. And I can switch to surface mode. When I return to the render workspace, I can see that this now will indeed render. And with that, we will conclude this series on voxel paint in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.